thank you so much again for listening into this week's Healthy Aging at Women vlog. And today I'm chatting again to Kirsty Wilson. Kirsty and I had a few chats before Christmas time. Some of you may have listened. And can I tell you, if you're a woman in your 40s plus, if you're 40 plus and you're female, you absolutely must go back and listen to, to Kirsty's talks because she is really passionate and really, really knowledgeable about all things menopause. She's a fitness and nutrition coach, um, better known as a midlife transformer. I love that. It sounds like a, um, do you know, like a superhero, the midlife transformer. I'm a ranger. <laughs> <laughs> so this is something like a movie. Um, and she specialises in the menopause. So she's absolutely, um, oh, she's a font of all knowledge. I love, love chatting with her. I always gain something new every time I speak to her. So it's quite a lot, obviously, health, kind of navigating your way through the menopause, Kirsty, I know that's what you, you help women to do that, but it's such a big area for us to talk about it, and the one goal would be here for hours. <laughs> so I think we agreed the last time we would chunk it down a wee bit, and our last chat, we focused on sleep, which is obviously a huge, a huge issue, or can be a huge issue, but today we were going to talk more about exercise, and how, as we go through the menopause, and we kind of through our middle years, what should we be doing differently now, Kirsty, compared to maybe someone in their 20s and 30s? Well, I think, you know, if we go back to probably why ladies come to me, and also realistically why a lot of people listening to this will want to tune into this, is because a lot of women have either maybe struggled with weight their whole life and felt as though now there's not much they can do about it, or they've not struggled with weight, but they see changes in their body shape as they have got around midlife, right? And it's, although it's different for everyone, these changes can happen in like in your early 40s for some women younger than that, right through. So they might not automatically link it with perimenopause, menopause, but it might just be they're noticing some changes, maybe more body fat around their middle area, you know, their arms, back fat, that kind of area. So we no longer store it on our hips and our bottom quite the same. And I think to speak about why we have to exercise a little bit differently, it's important to recap on why that happens. So estrogen is just one of the hormones that's dropping at this time in our life and it continues to decline. It's not like it just tapers off um, as we age, unfortunately. And estrogen is the one that's spoke about the most. And it's just the reduction in estrogen is responsible for so many of the symptoms that we get through this stage in our lives, although some people suffer more than others. Now, what the body does is it says your estrogen is dropping and it's really, really good. It wants to bring everything back to balance, what we call homeostasis. It says, let's make more estrogen. So fat cells actually for, um, produce a very weak form of estrogen. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't actually do the job of the, the estrogen that's been depleted naturally, but the body's trying its very best to do it. So it starts to lay down more fat and that fat tends to gather around this mid area in women. So that is why things start to change. We also have the added complication, well, I'm saying the complication, the added kind of um, I want to say this is the one we can do something about. So as we age men and women, we tend to be more sedentary. And that has been accentuated over sitting in a bottom during a pandemic as well. But the less we move about, the less muscle we have. So our muscles wasting away, right? It sounds quite dramatic, but that is what's happened as the years go on. So muscle likes to burn lots of calories. It's very what we'd say metabolically active. So the more muscle you have, the more calories you need. So as that muscle's dropping off, you're still eating the same. Yeah. You don't have the same muscle, so you start to lay down fat as well. So there's two kind of main things that are happening. The other thing that can play a part is testosterone. Now, people associate that with men, but actually testosterone we have as well, and it's declining too. And when the testosterone is declining, that causes us to lose muscle naturally. And also it can reduce our metabolic rate. So you're eating the same amount of food, but not using it up to the same extent. And then to throw it all into the mix, we've got all the other symptoms, tiredness, fatigue, exhaustion, irritability, anxiety. 
So actually, rather than go to a gym or exercise, we probably would rather lay up with a packet of chocolate biscuits sometimes so we can stress them. I'm not taking a very good picture here. I'm feeling quite, quite depressed at all this. Is I know, going. I know. Well, the good news <laughs> is there's lots that we can do. And I think the issue is that I think a lot of women, and I obviously see hundreds, thousands of women following me and the like posts and they're kind of starting to reach out a bit. But they're still watching because it's that whole thing. And I do make it clear, like, they'll see me in the gym, maybe lifting heavy weights, they'll see my clients in. But the truth is, no one generally goes from doing nothing to into a weight section of a gym and actually may never go into a gym. I have lots of my nutrition coaching clients actually are losing a lot of weight. And all we're doing at this moment is getting them out walks. Yeah. That is weight-bearing. Going a walk is weight-bearing. So if you do nothing, that's where I'm going to suggest people start. Because your body, if it's been doing nothing, suddenly you've got it out kind of pounding the streets. It's going to say, wait a minute here. Kirsty is needing me to lay down some muscle to help get this exercise done. So if you've not done anything, your body will start to respond relatively quickly. So... If that's all, if you've not done anything, that's a great place to start. However, if you want to do a little bit more, if you're ready to take it a little bit further, and I would recommend everyone does some sort of strength training, then we want to be thinking about body weight exercises to begin with. So maybe doing some squats, some lunges, not using any weights or anything like that. Some press-ups and other people go, whoa, press up. Doing full press-ups is tough. That's not what I mean. I mean gentle starting in your knees. If that's too tough, actually just being at the side of your desk or your kitchen surface, moving your body forward, just doing small things that are a stepping stone in the right direction. Now, I'm at this moment in point talking about women worried about gaining fat. And let's face it, although it has got its health risks, Unfortunately, most women start in this journey because from a point they don't like the way they look point of view. Yeah. And that's the reality. Obviously, it's a sweeping generalisation. Women do come and say, I want to be fitter, I want to be healthier. But 95% of the women I deal with also want to feel better in their clothes, in a bikini, yeah. out of clothes. Let's face it, right? Most women want to look their best. And men, right? But we're talking about women just now. So by getting these muscles to start doing some work, we are laying down more muscle cells and the muscle cells will say, right, okay, I need some more energy. So as long as we get nutrition right, which I know we're going to go on and speak about in another session, then actually your body will start using up some of that fat. Right. And what happens is you might gain some muscle, but you use some fat, so you become smaller. So you might have a lady that comes in as 10 stone and actually follows a weight training program and she's 10 stone at the end, but a totally different shape. Because yeah. you can be 17 stone and do all this and not lose weight if you've not got your nutrition right, if you're still eating too much. So obviously it's a balance of everything. Yeah. However, something that I think is more important than that is we strength train for our bone health. No, that's what I was going to say because I was actually talking to a client uh, who's similar ages with myself and she's an avid swimmer and like considers herself pretty fit and healthy, well is fit and yeah. very fit because she swims every day but I think her GP kind of said to her, listen you're going to have to do some more weight bearing stuff, that's all good and well. I think she was, what, what do you call it when you're kind of, it's like a precursor to osteoporosis, is there a name for that? Uh -huh. I think that she was kind of diagnosed with that and he'd said to her I said no 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 I swim every day and I'm really you know fit and he said well, you're gonna have to think more about strength yeah, training I mean in, in swimming is great um as well I mean that's the sport that I would do if I wasn't weight training I don't because I absolutely prioritize weight training things the other things I do that I might enjoy like you know swimming or I mean, it's a while since I've done anything like body combat and things like that, and I'll tell you why, but they kind of have to fall down the pecking order for me. Yeah. However, if it's all you do because you love it, then, you know, we will still include it, and I do want you to kind of expand on that a wee bit. But 
weight training for me happened at a slightly younger age, like probably 10 years ago, again, seriously, because my mum, God rest her soul, had osteoarthritis. Now, that's not directly related to osteoporosis, but my dad also suffers. He's actually got fused vertebrae in his back now as well. Um, and it's like alarm bells. The genetics do can play a part in loads of things, but our bones are actually decreasing in density from the age of about 35. So this isn't an old person disease, no. right? But we lose a further 20% of our bone density. So how densely packed our bones are, how solid they are, five to seven years after menopause, we lose 20%. So 1,200 people die every single month with hip fractures and complications. So, and actually it's US data, but it's a shocking statistic that more people die of complications from a hip replacement than do of all the female cancers combined. That's quite scary. So it's like one in two women over 50 50 have osteoporosis. And most people get about and don't know they've got it. Yeah. It's not until you fall on the ice and break your wrist, trip up the stairs, I don't know, after a night out, who knows, but it's <laughs> it's not until, and if you're over 50, you will be you will be checked to see how healthy your bones are if you break something, and it's not till then, and it's, you know, you can always improve it, but you're dealing with a situation that's kind of obviously got to a point that... Yeah you know, it's not the point past the point of no return, like most health related things, but we should be taking action as soon as we possibly can. Um, and strength training is a huge, huge part yeah. of that. And I liked what you said, I liked what you said as well, strength training, no, just start in the house, you don't, because some people are terrified to join a gym. Yeah, and you do the I get section, it. You're like, oh, it's far too scary. But the fact that you're saying, and let's face it, because you can just, now, there's a million um, different uh, routines on there that you could even, if you don't want to do it yourself, you could just click on to something and do 10 minutes. And you, can, you, know, I, I, you can, like, see 10 minutes. Some people, my clients, like, because obviously I bang on about it, they do do more than that, I'm not going to lie. However, you know, I've got a lady that started with me recently that's 61 and her sister's actually 65 and they both work with me online as nutrition clients and they're losing a lot of weight and They've been a wee bit resistant to the exercise part of it. Um, I remember memories I've been really sore after workouts, etc. But one of them started, and it's just 10 minutes a, a night they do, like a couple of wee tiny light dumbbells, you know, and they're actually doing it well. They've got the TV on. Yeah. So, it, you know, it, it can be done. I've had clients I've worked with for years that just still do it because they like to remain accountable and like the support, and they've still not ventured into a gym. Yeah. We don't, don't have, have to, yeah. you know, and I, I do get it as much as it's my kind of second home and stuff like that. I understand my gym said a major refurb recently, and I've been going to another gym that my family and members in, and I went back for the first time in London, and it's quite a big kind of industrial unit now, and I'm not saying I was unsure walking in, but you know, that way I wasn't just swarming in, like I was like figuring out where everything was. I was like on the treadmill walking, just trying to, you know, say that's here and that's there. So even with my experience, I get it. You know, yeah. a lot of people team up with a buddy, which makes it a lot easier. And there's nothing wrong with going on to YouTube things. But what I would say is there's lots of good PTs, coaches out there. Yeah. So actually, even... Even if financially you're not in a position to sign up with people, actually just following a few reputable people, you can get a lot of good ideas. I mean, it's not something I focus on in my page, but even on my page, there's three video workouts on there, right? Yeah. So there are ideas for people. Yeah. But starting simple, I do a lot of free master classes as well. So absolutely, no. Put all your details below here. Definitely. There's lots of fitness professionals out there, you know, doing a good job. So I think my advice would be to, you know, contact someone and they know if you're not sure. Um, but you would suggest, Kirsty, sorry to interrupt you. You know, even some who's kind of going through these these years and their weight's absolutely fine. It's not an issue. They're you really, we really need to get moving, don't we? I mean, we need to move whatever age we are, but we really need to get, whether it's for weight loss or not, we really need to look after ourselves and get moving, don't we? 
you know, I mean, like osteoporosis is a really, really kind of scary thing, and it's been, it's not very glamorous, so it's not spoken about a lot, yeah. you know. And we speak about, and this isn't me saying cancer's glamorous, right? I lost my mum with breast cancer, right? So that's not what I mean, but obviously it's got a high agenda. We talk yeah. about it a lot. Yeah. Osteoporosis is forgotten about. People think it's the wee 80 year old woman with the zimmer. This isn't, this is women of 50 falling and breaking bones. So that's important. But obviously, as well, for all your other kind of markers, your cardiovascular health, so your blood pressure, your cholesterol, your risk of heart attacks, obesity, all these things require you to be exercising. And it's just taking that a stepping stone. So it's doing something today or this week we didn't do last week. Yeah. There is something I want to say though, because that you know I'll go off in 20 tangents. <laughs> actually, I had the original question about why it's different, because obviously my 18-year-old strength trains and it's important for her too. What I would say is ladies are out there pounding the cardio it could be potentially doing themselves more harm than good. Now I do again work with clients on an individual basis, assessing what's best for them. However, if you're hitting three, four spin classes, oh, have I lost you? No, nope, I'm still here. Well, you were frozen there. Oh, was I? Um, three or four spin classes, maybe, you know, running, etc. All those things actually put a lot of stress on the body at this stage in our lives. Yeah. And that can break down muscle as well. So we're actually doing the opposite of what we want to do. So that's interesting, like almost over exercising. Yeah, absolutely. So I can have someone that says I do five cardio sessions a week, or maybe long endurance running or cycling, and they're not losing the fat around their middle, they're cutting the calories even further, which is putting further stress again on their body. Yeah. So, you know, if I had to say what's your perfect combination that you need to work towards. Um, or if you're really motivated, go for it, as you know, three strength training sessions a week. And then the other things that you enjoy sprinkled in there. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's not about saying mm-hmm. never go to spin if you really love it. You might need to love it as a good stress reliever, but we can overdo it. And you really need to tune into how tired you are, how your body's feeling. Is it sore? Can you get your head off the pillow in the morning? And these things, when we answer them truthfully, if they're not adding up, we're probably doing too much. Yeah, and I, I do think like that, I, it, it's almost that focus as you get older as well, if you're really trying to maintain your weight, if it's always been easy for you before you think, that's it. You just always think differently. Don't just do more of what you're necessarily don't do and maybe think no, differently. More isn't always more at this age. No, no, I get that, yeah. At all, so it's... I do just want to quickly say with the bone health, there's a couple of things um, in case we forget to talk about it and we're touching nutrition, but part of that is making sure you're getting your vitamin D supplementation. Yeah. That you're having enough calcium. Now, again, you'll see posts in my page regards the amount you should be having because it's a lot more than you would think. And if you don't smoke, it improves your bone density. And reducing the amount of alcohol you consume also improves it. So there are lots of factors in there. And, and we know all this. <laughs> we do know all this. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's a challenge sometimes. Just uh, yeah, The calcium yeah. one I've got to think about myself, and I'm still not quite at requirements because it's like over 50, but it almost doubles the amount you need. Oh, really? Oh, well, listen, why don't we call it a halt there and let's do another chat definitely yeah. about nutrition because I definitely want to hear more about that, about protein and about what we should be doing. So let's stop this chat here, Kirsty, if it's okay with you. We yeah. can catch up again very soon and talk about that. There so thank is. you so much again, Kirsty. Honestly, I could listen to you all day. I'm like, make notes as I go along. Oh, I'm sick of the same um, voice. I talk that much about it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, listen, take care. I'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.